Well, we've got a male red-bellied woodpecker roosting now in the woodpecker box and a male eastern screech owl red morph roosting in the uh, screech owl box. So I thought it would be a good time to uh, kind of discuss what uh, bo nest boxes I'm using and uh, give you some ideas of uh, having your own nest boxes. They make uh, obviously great uh, entertainment and uh, habitat for uh, birds in your backyard, but they also make great gifts for this time of year. The male woodpecker stakes out the nest box and uh, he'll roost there every uh, every night now and uh, probably won't uh, see eggs in there until probably oh March or April. Now the screech owl, he's, nest, he's roosting in the uh, screech owl box and he's basically guarding the box and courting the female to keep other males from uh, not only from the territory but from having the box. And they usually lay their eggs in uh, oh in, in February so both males are in the box claiming their boxes and really nest boxes are really critical to uh, attract uh, the big woodpeckers and the screech owls. I've been using the uh, Stovall 4H woodpecker box for uh, seven years now you can see there it is uh, and uh, you know it's uh, been a great box there have been woodpeckers or <laughs> squirrels in there every year for seven years and it's really in excellent condition. It's made out of all cedar construction with really a high quality, uh, you know, non-rusting uh, non uh, hardware. And, uh, you know, I, I use the Stovall nest boxes. They're, the only downside to them is that they're a little bit pricey. I mean, they're outstanding nest boxes. I think you have to get a nest box, especially if you're going to give one as a gift made out of cedar. I've had bad luck with ones that I bought made out of white pine or that I made myself out of white pine. Uh, the other thing is you can't treat a white pine nest box. You have to leave it natural. They just won't last long like the cedar will. You don't want to treat them and of course the cedar nest boxes have a natural sort of insect repellent about them. So you know I, I've take down the uh, both the uh, woodpecker and the owl box uh, for and clean them once a season in you know they're usually in the summer after the um, nesting is uh, completed and it's amazing how bug free they are uh, and that's really you know because they're made out of cedar you know, the only downside really to um, the Stovall nest boxes is they're pricey. If you go on Amazon, you'll see they're significantly pricier than other nest boxes, uh, especially uh, ones uh, made out of pine. But there's a few other cedar brands. But if you look closely at the Stovalls, you'll see they got really high quality and they really last. I don't uh, get any money from a Stovall and I bought these with my own money. Uh, so, you know, that's just a uh, unadulterated uh, opinion. But the one thing I will say is that the uh, woodpecker box, and this is a woodpecker box for big woodpeckers like uh, red-bellied and uh, and flickers, longer than they are uh, wide by a significant amount. You'll see some of the smaller woodpecker boxes are more like uh, bluebird boxes, but uh, for whatever reason, the Stovall boxes that I've had have had a hundred percent success rate. The woodpecker box for uh, seven years now, and the screech owl box for eight years. Now because my backyard is so wild I can't put either of these nest boxes on trees or anywhere that squirrels, snakes, or rats can reach them. You can see the woodpecker box uh, was in a tree for the first uh, season and the uh, squirrels just uh, chewed up the entrance to make it fit the squirrel and they, they nested in there. And uh, so I put both of my nest boxes, uh, one woodpecker box at the under the eave of one end of my outbuilding and the screech owl box at the uh, 24 feet at the other end of the outbuilding. So I got like an out, uh, outbuilding with uh, nest boxes under the crown of the roof at each end of it. And uh, that's really uh, accomplishes a number of things that are kind of nice. One, it's real easy to uh, to get to them and clean them and uh, watch them and also to run uh, cameras to them. I'll talk a little bit about the cameras later. Uh, and the other is because it's on the end of these aluminum outbuildings, uh, you know, snakes and rats and squirrels can't get to them unless you make the mistake of letting uh, a, uh, a tree branch grow too close to the roof, which I did one season while I was gone and uh, the uh, squirrels got into the owl nest box. And uh, so, you know, but generally you just trim away the branches. Uh, but uh, the other thing about placement of a box, you know, the owls in particular are not too picky about the placement as long as they feel safe. Uh, one thing that's important is a, a perch that's pretty close to the uh, owl box and the other for both of them is to have a cover. Usually it'd be nice if there's a tree within say 
10 or 12 feet of it. Here's a little video I made a number of years ago about uh, nest box placement. The eastern screech owls continue their courtship on January 22nd. This is about a month earlier than the last few years when the eggs were laying around March 1st. But it's been a very mild winter and food is plentiful. The male screech owl has claimed a box and now spends his nights guarding the box and hunting for food, in part to convince the female that he is a good provider. Once eggs are laying, she will have to incubate them all day and most of the night, and once they hatch, she will be in the box 24 hours a day except for short forays out after dusk and before dawn, and she must depend on the male to bring food while she protects the owlets. Last year the nesting failed and three eggs were abandoned after the male stopped bringing food for some reason. Due to habitat loss, there is a shortage of natural tree cavities and a lot of competition and danger associated with the available natural cavities. I cannot put owl nest boxes on any trees as the squirrels and snakes will take them over. With regard to owl nest box placement, I've found that the eastern screech owls are not too picky as long as they feel the box is safe from other creatures and they don't have to travel too far in the open to reach it. I put the nest box under the gable end of an aluminum sided outbuilding and the entrance is about nine feet off the ground. This should make the box safe from anything but another bird such as a kestrel. Snakes and squirrels need not apply. You have to make sure there are no close branches that the squirrels and such can reach the building from though. The owls can drop down to the camera's left to a nearby six foot wood fence behind the building and then head out into the brush or go first to the perch. Placing a perch in front of the nest box makes a big difference in attracting screech owls to the backyard. This perch is about 12 feet in front of the nest box and 6 feet off the ground. It is used as a staging area by the owls and a hunting perch. It makes the nest box much more secure and attractive to them. It's also important not to use pesticides in the backyard as that is their hunting grounds and lizards, small snakes, frogs, and large bugs are a big part of their diet. Links to more information is in the information section on this video. Another option that I've had a lot of success with is uh, squirrel condos. I bought a couple of squirrel condos a number of years ago with the intent of using them, uh, you know, to give the squirrels housing in the trees. And uh, for whatever reason, the squirrels uh, were kind of reluctant to use them. It may be because the snakes and the, can easily get in there or something like that. Uh, you know, they, they still, the squirrels, uh, you know, they, t they tend to prefer to make their own nests up in the trees unless they can get over to the house where the screech owl mox is and they'll move in. But, uh, you know, to get to the point, the, the squirrel condo, actually what you see here is the owls using a modified squirrel condo. What I, if you see the squirrel condo has this block of wood on the front and it has the entrance hole for the squirrels on the side. So what I do is uh, pop off the block uh, on the front, uh, put in a three inch hole with a, you know, a drill and a circular bit. If you're handy, it's not that difficult. And then I use the, uh, piece of wood on the side there you can see it's glued on with wood glue to cover up the hole and then I drilled uh, four or five holes near the top for uh, air circulation and then put a perch in about uh, three three inches below the hole you, you really have to have a perch in any kind of a owl nest box because they love to sit on it and look out the uh, look out the uh, window so in the uh, chalk and nut uh, squirrel condos are made out of pure cedar. They're not real fancy, but they're made out of cedar and they've got decent hardware and they're really, oh, about probably half the price of the uh, stovo box. I don't know if they'll last as long as a stovo box, but if you're handy and you want to put up a number of them, that's another option. You can see the, <laughs> the owls had a lot of fun with this modified squirrel condo just by cutting the hole in front and blocking the hole on the side and putting a little perch in it because it's just about the perfect size for a screech owl box. You know, the bottom line is, though, I mean, there's a lot of, if you go on Amazon, you're going to be kind of overwhelmed by the number of screech owl uh, boxes that there are. And, uh, you know, uh, the one thing I like about the Stovalls is they're well made. And, you know, like I said, the, the owl box I've had now, I just cleaned it out for the eighth time. And it's remarkable what good shape it's in and just put it back up and, uh, and it's ready for another season. So it's kind of like a nice heirloom or legacy box, if you will, because... You know, it has that character to it being cedar. Uh, you know, white pine, you know, they might, it might last a long time too, but I just uh, am partial to the cedar, uh, primarily because of its insect repellent characteristics and just the owls just seem to love it. 
As far as cameras go, both of these nest boxes, the woodpecker box and the screech owl box, have the older wired uh, Hawkeye nest cameras. Uh, and both the nest cameras are seven and eight years old. They've been, uh, I mean, they're not real super high resolution. I think they're 480, uh, 480p. I think, uh, and, uh, but uh, they've lasted all these years and they've never failed. They've been out, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the weather, you know, in the nest box, uh, really haven't had any problem with them. Uh, you know, the other thing that I've been doing lately, though, since both these nest boxes are at the end of the house where uh, the outbuilding where power is, I've been using uh, uh, USB uh, endoscope cameras that you can get on Amazon. They're like, the cameras are really designed for um, like inspection cameras, like behind the walls or inside pipes or everything. But they're pretty high resolution and they uh, focus close up. They have a real small field of view. And that's one of the problems with cameras in a nest box. Both these nest boxes are surprisingly small inside, but the, the, the uh, birds prefer it that way. Uh, you know, the more o wide open space, the more they t tend to be less uh, less uh, safe feeling. But, uh, you know, you can look at these nest, these um, Hawkeye cameras, or uh, Hawkeye cameras are really hard to find. I can't, they stopped making the one that I'm using now. They make a newer one. I can't vouch for how good it is. But, you know, there's all sorts of possibilities with um, wireless cameras and things like that now. But the one thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to be shining light uh, in the uh, night nest box at, at night when the owls, uh, you know, in the owl's eyes and things like that. So, you know, I use uh, the, the uh, Hawkeye is nice because uh, at night it has, uh, you know, the IR lights that uh, doesn't bother the owl's vision. And, uh, but you might try, if you're going to be in a position where you can use one of these USB endoscope, uh, get, uh, get one, you can look at my shopping list, but they may, there's several of them with, um, with stiff 15 to 20 foot uh, cords, and you just run it from the nest box into a window, and then you seal up the window with some tape, and then you plug it into your laptop or your computer, and bam, you're looking at uh, real close-ups of, uh, of what's going on in there. I mean, you can't get... Uh, you, you can try one at the top and one at the side. You can kind of just experiment with them. You have to drill a hole that matches the diameter of the uh, endoscope camera. But that's something to play around with. I might one of these days uh, uh, do a more detailed video of how I do that. Maybe this, later this season when I've got two endoscope cameras in the owl box. And we'll see how it goes. If, if it works out good, I'll do a separate video of how to do that. But for now... The main thing is just to talk about nest boxes, and I'll put some links in there to nest boxes and some other information. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to have fun in your backyard, and uh, if you have a decent uh, habitat nearby, you know, especially some trees and things like that, that will make the animals uh, feel secure, then you definitely want to try a, a nest box. Now, you may be lucky and be able to put it in a tree. Uh, the other option, of course, is to put it on a a post with a uh, one of those things you can buy on Amazon. It's like a baffle that uh, keeps raccoons and squirrels off. Uh, the other thing you just got to watch out for ones on a post is if they're depending on where you are in Florida. I mean, they those things are just bake in the sun. Uh, the way that both the woodpecker and the owl boxes are uh, arranged is they they get uh, the owl box gets a morning sun, then it's in the shade. The woodpecker box the woodpecker box gets the uh, afternoon sun and then it, and it doesn't get any sun until about two or three in the afternoon so it's not exceedingly hot uh, so you know if you know, that's the only downside of using one on a pole is depending on where you are it just could be blasted by the sun and actually be too hot and the pole of course has to be reasonably close to some sort of habitat that they can make the jump to but uh, anyways give you some ideas so good luck